Uh, this uh, I, I don't wear the I don't wear this the black very often. I I, I use I like to wear like more brownish than black, so I don't wear this jacket too often. But the brown didn't look right with this, so I went with that. So this is Fashion 101. Uh, we'll be <laughs> we'll be talking about coordinating a wardrobe today and what colors go with what. Um, actually, uh, again, I apologize for canceling class on Wednesday. It was sort of a last-minute thing, a confusing situation, and I do apologize. Um, I have extended, I, and I had intended to post maybe a lecture from a previous semester or whatever, but that didn't work out. Um, fortunately, um, creating a, um, a jar is fairly straightforward, so we'll go over that today, I hope. If I can log on to Canvas, yeah, which may or may not be a problem. If not, we'll see. I'll I'll I'll, I'll wing it, and we'll figure something out. Um, the um, oh, I have extended the the um, due date uh, based on based on um, me missing class. So I extended it. I think it was supposed to be due Wednesday, and I moved it to next Monday. So if we need to adjust it further, we can. One option that I did want to remind you of, um, if you need assistance, especially as things wind down, is um, that you have the opportunity to, to Skype with me. Now, you have to make an appointment. You just can't like Skype me in the middle of me you know, watching a movie or something. But um, you know, if you uh, have... Um, you know, you can set up an appointment to Skype like you would set up an appointment to come and see me in my office. And you would just need Skype installed. Um, my name on Skype is Mike.Zellers, I think. So try that. If that doesn't work, then let me know, and it, it will be something else. All right, let's try to log on to Canvas. And wish me luck here. Um, I have the pro version of Skype, which means I can see your screen. I think you can see my screen as well. If it's set that way, I'm almost sure you can, now that I think about it, because I think when I used it last. Well, it is, um, it is different if you um, use the free version or the, the premium version. I know that. There's a difference. Oh, for, oh, I almost said a bad word here. Let me, let me rephrase that. For goodness sake. They, um, they're complaining about my browser. It's like after waiting all day to be able to log on, it's going to complain about me using the wrong browser. I'll tell you, the nerve. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that's a good idea for the homework. <laughs> well, you can turn in again. All right. So, the idea of this is one of the one of the main ways to distribute code is uh, via a jar. Um, a jar will be used. Um, if you want to make your classes available in other uh, applications, you can use, you can import those in as like a resource. Um, you can um, use this with Java Web Start, um, and for a number of reasons, it's good. Let's look at what we have here. Where's 
where to put it. Well, it is on the desktop. I have this example. And notice what I have. I'm actually going to make a backup of this so I can play with it. Classes. Here's where I want to be in classes. All right. It is going to go and take my source. Oh. All right. I have my files broken down into packages. And I went a little crazy here with this. But this follows the reverse URL method of specifying classes. In other words, you want to guarantee that your class names are unique in the whole world, right? Because there's a possibility you might want to integrate with someone else's Java classes. And if that's the case, you have no control over what they've called their classes. So, for example, this is a little conversion application to convert temperature. And I have a temperature class and a first GUI class. So, temperature.java. It would be possible that I would want to use someone else's classes that also had a temperature.java. Well, how would I distinguish between my temperature.java and someone else's? Well, you can do that by specifying the package name. And the package name, you usually use a reverse URL, all right? Because URLs are guaranteed to be unique. And each organization that has a URL, all right, can set up their standards for using it to ensure that it's going to be unique. So, for example, me here being at LCCC, so what is the domain here? LorraineCCC.edu. So, in forming my class name, or my package name, dot, and then I can put some extra stuff indicating the package that I want this to be in. I could, for example, put Zellers there, and that would distinguish my stuff from anyone else's. Or I could put any number of things. Once I get down to edu.lorraineccc, then um, it's up to the organization to maintain um, a convention for ensuring that the file names are unique. So I have two folders underneath this, which is probably overkill, but I have a conversions folder and I have a GUI. All right. So that will place those in. Um, that will place those, um, or that will be the packages for these two. So I have two packages here, conversions and GUI. This just allows me to separate my stuff and I can then include different jars if I want to do different stuff and so on. If we look at this, if I look at temperature.java, um,
you'll notice that at the top of this is an indication of where the package lives. All right. In other words, I say this package is edu lorraineccc dot dot java dot conversions. Okay. So that is that corresponds to the folder which my application lives in. All right. So, in other words. Um, if you consider my root folder, underneath my root folder for this is an edu folder. Underneath it, that is a Lorraine CCC folder. Underneath that is a CISS folder. Underneath that is a Java, and underneath that is conversions. Again, a little bit of overkill, but it matches the path that I've defined up here for that folder. All right. Okay, the GUI one is similar. If I look at the GUI, the GUI itself is in a different folder. And you'll notice that the package is e same thing till you get to this point, then it becomes GUI instead of conversions. So I have each of these in packages, and I could compile one of the packages if I want to and, and create a jar for that and, um, and so on. All right, so I have sort of a hierarchy set up for this. Now I want to go and compile um, everything and put it into a single jar. So let me get to... I am going to delete the classes folder because that's what I'm going to compile into. And I'm going to create an empty one. Now for my command line, I'm in here. And to refresh our memory, Within deployment, there's an EDU folder, Lorraine CCC, CISS, Java, conversions, and so on. So from within here, I'm going to type in Oh, 
actually, I lied. One thing I'm going to create is I'm going to create for this application the manifest. Didn't actually want to delete everything. I think I just wanted to delete this. And and what is in the manifest? The manifest tells where the main is for this application. In other words, the main for this application is in EDU, Lorraine CCC, CISS, Java, GUI, first GUI. Remember that it's a rule for Java applications that someone needs a main method. All right? But do keep in mind that it's possible you could have a couple classes that have main methods. This simply says, when I execute this jar, which main method do I want to use? I want to use the one that is in EDU, um, Lorraine CCC, CISS, Java, GUI, first GUI. All right. So, All right, let's look at this command and let's look at what it produced. It produced a jar file. That if I click on,
think I need to be up a folder. I'm missing a step. My bad. All right, let's rewind. First thing I knew I, I need to do is compile it. I was trying to create the jar before I was compiling it. So. I'm going to say Java dash classes All right. I'm going to edit this video after I get it to to cut out the garbage. So if you want to watch a clean version, you can you can watch the clean version. Okay, take two. All right. My mistake was I was forgetting to compile before I was creating a jar. I read it. Uh, I read it. I read create jar, and I started with that step, forgetting that I need to compile it first. So what you need to do is get into the folder where your source code is, the root folder. So if I notice here, deployment is my root folder. And underneath that, I have classes, edu, and so on down the line. All right. I'm going to delete my classes folder and start from scratch. All right. So now I want to compile. And I want to compile and I want to create that classes folder, which is going to contain all the class files for all the Java files that I've created. All right? And it's going to put them within a certain structure. 
So, I'm going to go and do Java C dash D. Dash D puts my compiled classes into that folder. All right? So it's going to put it in a folder called classes. What do I want to compile? I want to comp the, compile the file that is in EDU, Lorraine CCC, CISS, Java, GUI, first GUI. All right? So that's what I want to compile. So right now, I don't have any classes folder. I go and execute this, which is just like a regular compile command, except I have this, the dash D switch. The dash D switch indicates where I want to put my compiled class files. This is simply a path to my main Java file. In this case, the, the um, Java file that I would execute would be in the GUI folder, and it's called first GUI. So if I compile that, it's going to compile all the other Java files. So I go and compile that. Tells me class is not found. Okay. Going to play that way, huh? So I have to go in and create the class folder. All right. So now I compile it. It does its thing. And if I look in the classes folder, I get all those classes compiled and placed in the proper directories. So there's the conversions and there's the GUI. All right. So this is the first step to do is compile it. Put the path to your main Java class and use a dash D to put it in a subfolder. Now I want to make the jar. So now I will go in and I'll copy my jar fi or my um, manifest file from my previous example. Into my classes folder. And again, we look at this. That's all that's in the manifest file. Main dash class colon edu dash Lorraine CCC dash, again, the path of the package to your main class. Now, there needs to be a new line after this. I've had problems where I did not go and put, like, the last new line after it. So there needs to be a line underneath that. Now I can make my manifest or I have my manifest, I can make my jar. And I do that by saying jar dash cvmf manifest dot text conv dot jar that's the name of my jar that I want to create and edu, that's the path where it's going to find all the class files. I run that and tells me I cannot find manifest.text. Oh, I wonder if it's called something other than dot text. Go in and view Manifest.txt. Oh, I'm in the wrong folder. All right, now I'm in my class folder. Now I can go in and create the jar. Yay. And if I look, now I have the jar, and I can run the jar. And there is my... Yeah. 
If there's no GUI, would open up uh, a terminal and, and run that, I believe. Yeah. Let's do this once correctly from beginning to end because someone obviously got a little rusty over the four-day weekend. I also had a nasty nosebleed this morning, which I, I don't know, something's going on with my sinuses, I think. So um, those are my two excuses for today. All right, let's do this from, from scratch. I'm going to create, I'm going to delete the contents of the classes directory and I'm saving the, saving the manifest because I know I'm going to need that in a minute. I go to the command line, get into the appropriate folder. So right now I have the path to my source code. EDU, blah, blah, blah. And the packages were defined at the top of each of these as being the folder path of the packages to get to. All right. I now am going to compile it with the dash D option. So I'm going to say Java C dash D classes. What's the dash D mean? The dash D means I am not going to put my compiled classes in this folder, which is what we've been doing since the first week of class. All right. I'm going to put it in another folder, in another directory. And that directory is called classes. Now it's also going to create the tree structure. All right. So given that first GUI and temperatures are not in the root, but they're in their own packages, you know, EDU, Lorraine CCC, Java, conversion slash GUI or whatever it is, all right, it's going to create those folders for the class files. So now I have to give the path to my main Java class, which is EDU, Lorraine CCC, Java, GUI. All right, goes and does its thing, and it has compiled them. And now if I look in my classes folder, I will see I have that folder structure. And inside my leaf nodes of that folder tree, I have my class file. So I have temperature.class, and I have first GUI.class. So that's the first step that you need to do. That was my fatal flaw today, is forgetting that it was a two-step process. Now that I've compiled it and created those packages and so on, I can go and make my jar. And in order to do that, I need my manifest, which simply indicates main-class colon 
the name of the class that we want to run when this jar starts. All right. I get into the classes folder. And then I create the jar by saying jar dash CV MF manifest dot txt and then the name of the jar that I want to create. Now what do these switches mean? Dash C means we want to create a jar. You can do more things with a jar than create it. Right? You can look and see what is inside a jar. The dash C indicates we want to create a jar. The V indicates verify, which means that that's the little error message, or not error messages, but informational messages we get when we create the jar. The M is specifying where the manifest file lives. All right, so our manifest is in the file called manifest.txt, and the F is the name of the jar file that we want to create. So we want to create conv.jar, so we put the F switch, that we put CONV jar. Go and do this, and it went and it created the jar. All right, which we can double click on. Oh, you know what? I missed, I missed a step. edu. I need to specify the path of the classes. There we go. I wondered why it just gave me just a quick error message or a quick uh, informational message. There it goes and it goes and creates the jar. And now if I double click on it, it runs it. I can also run it from the command line by saying java dash jar and the name of the jar. And there you go. Questions about this? Yes. Can I open up the code for first GUI? Sure. Does what have to be there? Um, yes, because it's in a different package. Um, Excellent question. I don't think I pointed that out. I think I pointed out the package statement at the top, which is I thought what you were going to be asking about. But yes, you would you need to import that to tell it that you're in yeah. Right. 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 It's a good question. I will see if I have time. I may edit the video, I may not. I might just post it as it is, but we'll do that later today. Yes.
Well, this, this sounds like the same thing um, that Mark mentioned, that, that you kept everything in the same folder. Yeah, I, w I, I want you to separate them out in the old folders. And I, and I, I apologize for that. Um, give it a shot. If it isn't too much difficulty, try it that way. Try it creating the own folders. I mean, I feel bad, you know, because you guys were on your own as far as that goes. So um, I would ask you to give it a shot, but I, I, I'm, I'm sort of changing my mind and saying, yeah, it's probably okay if you, um, if you do it that way. So if you've already turned it in, um, or if you've already finished it that way, um, I suppose that's good. Um, but I would like you to, to try to do it using the different directories and all that. Right, right, right. Actually create the manifest, right. The idea of, of creating packages is, is again, something that's important. Because if you imagine um, creating, uh, you know, if you worked for a larger organization, um, where you, um, you, ha you know, had different, you know, different application chunks that went together. Um, you know, for example, think about the college. Um, the college you could think of probably as having, you know, if you imagine the code that exists, if they were to write a giant Java application around this. Um, you know, what, what are the main areas of functionality that you'd expect out of a system? There would be like the academic side of it. And the academic side of it would be like what courses are there, um, what, uh, you know, what uh, degree programs consist of, what the prerequisites are, that sort of thing. There would be probably a financial system, all right, that, that, or a financial subsystem might be a better uh, use of... Um, you know, be better use of words here, that would deal with the billing and financial aid and that sort of thing. And there might be like a student management system that had different components. Where you can sort of break down a big system into smaller subsystem and you could create packages for the little subsystems. So if you're writing an application, if I was writing an application to, I don't know, maybe analyze um, student, um, you know, majors and, and student grades and majors and that sort of thing, um, the financial aspect would probably not be relevant. So I wouldn't necessarily need to bring that class in, or uh, I'm sorry, that package in. I could devote to just certain packages, all right? And I could use only those jars that I needed to implement what it is I wanted to do. So it is important to learn how to do the whole packaging thing. So. Again, uh, out of guilt for missing last Wednesday, I, w I, I changed my mind and I'll accept it, but um, it would be good if you gave it a shot um, this way. Once you remember it's a two-step process, it's actually pretty easy. Questions? The yes. Well, based on where you compile from, remember where I compiled from. I compiled from the root folder of the application. All right. So when I compiled, when I compiled, I was up here. So when I When I am compiling from this root folder and it says to import the thing from here, it knows to go down from that root folder to EDU, to Lorraine CCC, to CISS, to Java, to conversions, to temperature. Pardon me? Um. I just didn't hear what you said. Oh, give it a shot.
Yes. Yeah, because the import statement is in the GUI. So you're saying, what if you don't need to compile the GUI? Would the import statement work? Well, the import statement isn't going to work. The import statement is only used when you compile the GUI. So, what if you're importing another class? Well, then you would, and, and you wanted to compile those separately without compiling the, um, without compiling the GUI? Yep. All right. First of all, I'm not sure why you wouldn't just go and compile the GUI anyhow, even though you didn't make So you don't have access to the GUI. Yeah, then you just compile it this way um, and, and give the class that you do want to compile. Um, path to instead of compiling the GUI, right? Other questions? So now this is the first step into doing a few things. You know, you could give this jar to someone, you could launch this via a Java web start, yes. Right. Yeah. What issues did you run into? Okay, well, that, that, first of all, that's a Gmail thing, all right? Um, yeah, I was going to say, I, w I would use it, right. I would, yeah, uploading, I, that was one of my suggestions. You could upload it to, to Google Drive would be one, one way to do it. Another thing you could do is probably when it said you might lose some data, that was probably telling you that, or whatever the air, or warning message was, do you want to do this anyhow? That's where you got messed up. My guess is, remember that, that this jar file, if we were to look at this jar file, On Windows, it might, if you change the extension to .txt, I'm wondering if it looks at the character set and changes some characters. Because remember, this is, what's a jar? A jar is not. <laughs> a jar is not intelligible stuff. So it's different characters, characters outside of the normal ASCII alphabet. My guess is when you said you, when you, said you changed it to a .txt and it gave you a warning message, at that point it converted this stuff into normal-ish text, which would, in, which would take sort of the unprintable characters and do something with them. At that point is where you probably lost the functionality. All right. What I would do is I wouldn't convert it to a regular other extension. I'd convert it to a nonsense, like convert 
zip to underscore IP, you know, uh, Z underscore P, or if I was converting the jar, I'd make it J underscore R or something goofy like that. So it doesn't have a real file type associated with it and it won't do any sort of funky conversions with it. But based on what you're telling me, that's what it would work. Because if you were able to, um, if you were able to change it without um, altering the data inside of it, then yeah, you should be able to rename it to anything and rename it back and it should work. But based on the way that that warning message you described, it sounds like when you convert it to a TXT file, that did something with the innards of it, all right, and, and messed that up. All right, other questions? All right, I will post the video for this later today. Like I said, I, I, I probably will go back and edit it just to eliminate sort of the dead air uh, in the middle while I was a little confused. Um, and that way you can see how to do that. Again, I do apologize for um, um, missing um, last Wednesday. It was something unavoidable that sort of came up at the last minute um, or close to the last minute. Um, Remember that you can Skype. You can set up an appointment to Skype if you're running into difficulties. Um, turn it in if you did the jar all in one folder and I will accept it, but I would like you to take a shot. Even if you don't return it in, you know, take a shot in lab just so that you understand this process. Normally what I would do if I was doing this, if I were you as a student, is I would work everything like we've done so far in this course by having everything in the same folder, compile it and test it. Once I sure it worked, then I would go and separate things into the packages and put the import statements in and put the package statements in and then recompile it. Make sure it still worked and then be good to go. All right, we'll see you up in lab.